All guests appear on the Bud Light guest line, but we're not having Steve Kerr on today. And now we absolutely know why. There was a holdup of the four-team trade that sounded an awful lot like it might be coming out of Detroit with Mark Spears just the day before saying, hey, James Wiseman is going to start. Today it was revealed that James Wiseman would not be playing, and it sounded like since we all know that Gary Payton just played, the holdup might be coming from Detroit. Because all parties, which, by the way, every single party has agreed to this trade, at least publicly, has put out a statement. I mean, it got even further down the road than the Correa thing got with the San Francisco Giants in terms of everyone saying, yeah, this deal's happened. Pending physicals. Well, a physical of Gary Payton II has failed. Shams just reported a failed physical exam of Gary Payton has placed the four-team trade in serious jeopardy Anthony Slater and Shams are reporting that Peyton's core muscle injury could sideline him for up to three months following a Warriors exam. The Warriors have until tomorrow to either go through with the trade or have the entire four-team deal rescinded. All players return to their starting positions. Golden State reacquired Peyton at the trade deadline on Thursday. Wow. It gets even more convoluted. Ray, what else have you found out during the commercial break? Well, I didn't find it out. I just read it. What but else? This is from, this is from you Chris read? Mannix of Sports Illustrated, who uh, cited The Athletic in a paragraph that reads, Peyton, according to sources, had been playing, playing through pain in Portland. Sources added that the Blazers training staff had been pushing him to gut through it, giving him torrid hall shots. This had not been relayed to the Warriors during the negotiation process. Okay. I'm calling a lawyer. If I'm Joe Lacob right now, and I'm thinking about an actionable offense against the Allen family for not fully disclosing a player that they were willing to trade's medical history on day of trade. Is there anything, any bylaw that says you have to be transparent in terms of medicines issued to players who would be involved in trades. I don't know what the NBA would think about the transparency that clearly was being fogged up here by Portland to get a deal done. Um, I don't know. I'm sure that the league office would aggressively discourage the, war the Warriors from taking the Blazers to court. But... The Warriors also have the the avenue of negating the trade. They're, I mean, they you know, it, if they said, "Well, wait a minute, we just did a medical and he failed it," because and you didn't disclose this, they could just say, "You have to take him back now." But the reason, but the reason they came no. to the conclusion that they wanted to get back into the Gary Payton II business is because they thought him healthy true there's no way but, they would have actively gone about working a trade for someone who was saying i'm being forced to play and but for toradol shots i'd be unable to well look it, it's not a good look for the blazers and i'm not a lawyer so i can't speak to this with any certitude but i think the league would say you have an avenue you can negate the trade you can get your property back and I hate to say property, that's a bad word. But you can get your player back. You can walk this entire trade back. You have a remedy for fixing this. The fact is the Warriors can undo the trade or they can take it as is and just say, well, we get cap relief for now and we will try to get Peyton ready within three months. Before you uncovered the athletic article, the tweet from Crick's Chris Mannix, however, you stumbled across what you just shared about the toward all pain and, and playing in pain. The one thing that you and I agreed to during the commercial break is this is basically too far over the skis to pull back now. Yeah, I think so. I think even if the Warriors felt deceived to, to undo the entire trade means that they have to reaccept James Wiseman, who they have said all along they're looking after his best interests. If they bring him back, then they're basically saying, all right, 
you still work for us, but we're not going to let you work because we don't think you're a good enough worker. And the alternative for him is going to Detroit to a place where they're going to say, we're going to let you play, which is, you know, detrimental to Wiseman's career. So I think they can live with the possibility that they don't get Gary Payton until May, except the fact that they're on the hook for two more years of his salary in exchange for the $130 million of cap relief. Now, look, one of the problems with all this, beyond just the player availability that may not be possible, is the like uh, the single dumbest way to interpret this, a guy on the Otis Bird the Third text line named Raphael just interpreted this the single dumbest way it could be interpreted. He said, Bob Myers is lost. Fire him. What are you talking about? Bob Myers is supposed to have Superman X-ray vision and be able to see a torn muscle in a player who was on the court playing against his team the night before the trade was consummated. Bob Myers is not responsible for any element of this blowing up. The, the, the crime, if you wanted to say this is a crime, which it isn't, but the deception is coming from the Portland Trailblazers. And this is a deception. They willingly, according to this story from Shams and Anthony Slater, Chris Mannix, however, got relayed. According to this story, and Ray, you can talk me through the entire paragraph if I'm if I'm getting this wrong. Please stop me if I'm getting this wrong. Mm. But this entire thing happened because the Portland Trailblazers never told the Warriors straight up, he probably wouldn't be able to play if we weren't loading him up with Toradol in the 15 games that he has played for us. In the 15 games that he did play for Portland, he didn't do much. Gary Payton was four points, two and a half rebounds, one and a half assists. So it's not like he was out there doing much in the 15 games that he played. But should he have even been out there at all? If Portland is willing to drug their players to get them on the court, don't they need to disclose that to a team that's about to trade for one of those players? I don't know if they are required to or not, to be honest with you. So the the notion that they've deceived the Warriors, um, and I mean, that may very well be true. It or, sounds like you tried to just sell me a car that you knew had a bad radiator hose in it or whatever. I don't, I don't know anything about engines, but your, your, your phalange rod was all screwed up and you knew it. But you sold me the car thinking that I wouldn't catch the broken phalange rod. And well, and that to me is like, well, uh, like there, there's a lemon law for that. You know, you're not allowed to sell a car without disclosing an actual, the car fax information. No, but you, 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 but there are remedies for that. And one of the other ones that I didn't even think of until I read the, the story that just got posted in The Athletic is that there have been this behind the scenes discussions on Friday about the possibility of amendments to the trade. Maybe they throw in somebody else instead of Peyton or someone in addition to Peyton. Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard, get it done. That should, this should cost the Portland Trailblazers Dame Lillard. He'll make a great warrior. You know he's from Oakland, right? Yeah, no, I'm vaguely aware of he that. He is yes. from the Bay Area. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think the Warriors get to say, "Well, we get to pick what we want from you." They would have to renegotiate that entire deal, which means dragging Atlanta and Detroit back into this. I think the Warriors may just choose the simplicity of saying, "Okay, we're just going to technically pass him, and then we'll put him on on the IL." And just until he gets healthy, and we will simply do without him. Because a case can be made, not a legal case, but an argument can be made. Well, the only thing that happened here is that you lost the services of a guy that you haven't been playing. And you got something in return for that. And you can't is, play uh, him either. Which is nine figures worth of cap relief. And you still get the player, you just don't get him as soon as you get him. But that's a choice the Warriors get to make, not one that the Blazers get to propose. But here's the deal. 
It's not. Is it just? Is it, it's not. The, the Warriors, of course, made this trade partially considering cap space, but they are also considering how do we be a better team? We need okay. another player. We need a player who understands and fits us in a way that the player that we just walked away from does not fit us. And we're trying to make the playoffs now. Like Gary Payton might have been a move that was supposed to bolster this roster beyond this season. But you can't worry about those other seasons until the completion of this season. They didn't make a trade for Gary Payton specifically for tomorrow. Tomorrow was included in today. And if they can't get today out of Gary Payton, oh, my God, thank you very much. Lucas is handing us things. And he put a star next to this. So it must be a portion that you'd want me to read, Lucas. We already read that. This is from Shams. Oh, this is what you, yes. Yeah. Peyton, it's from, it's, it's also from Shams time. and Slater. Shams and Slater. Shams and Slater. Shams and Slater. All love. Yeah. Uh, Peyton, according to sources, has been playing through pain in Portland. Sources added that the Blazers training staff had been pushing him to gut through it. When's the last time the Warriors medical staff pushed a player to gut through anything? They are notoriously conservative. Playing through pain, giving him horrible shots to do it, had not been relayed to the Warriors during the negotiation process. That, to me, sounds like scumbaggery is in play. There is an element of deception that I think the Trailblazers are trying to get away with here. And maybe, but the question is how... How aggressive do the Warriors want to be about this? Because I think the league will say, look, you have relief. If you don't want to do the deal, don't do the deal. And the damage that will accrue to the to the Blazers is they don't get to get Gary Payton off their payroll. And they now have a reputation around the league as people who are not to be trusted. I don't think the league wants to escalate this into something huge and i think they will in subtle ways suggest to the to all parties you know what let's figure out a way either change this deal so that everybody's happy which would probably mean the 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 blazers would have to send somebody else back to golden state and golden state can either accept or you should say no no deal or they take or they just take Peyton. here are the four most important words And the only question that really matters, I think, going forward here. How pissed is Joe? Because if Joe Lacob feels that they tried to pull a fast one on him, Joe's the kind of guy who is going to be so personally, I think, pissed off and offended by that. Unless he's also saying, hey, you you know, the, the main goal of this really wasn't the acquisition of Peyton. The main goal of this was the tax relief. And I still have that main goal checked off. But I just don't think that that's the way Joe gets down. I think he is way too highly competitive and invested in on-court success to not be red in the face furious right now I'm sure he's, over at Chase Center. I'm sure he's pissed purple. No question. But that's where Bob Meyer's skill as a negotiator will come in handy in-house. We'll just say, okay, look, what do you want to do? Do you want to negate the trade? I'll negate the trade. Do you want to accept it and be happy with the cap relief and the notion that we'll get Gary Payton in May? Do that then. I mean, I think... Or or do you want to sue the Portland Trailblazers for Damian Lillard? That's what I would do. And you'd have no chance in court. We're still, we're filing uh, frivolous lawsuits. Oh, Okay. Well, then go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> we'll sue everybody. We will sue the corpse of Paul Allen. I might, I'm, I might sue the Phoenix Suns. Just throw them in there. Sure, why not? No, I mean it's it. Based on what we know, this is a pretty creepy thing that the Blazers have done. But the yeah. only way that they get to evade some responsibility is if the Warriors call them and said, "Is all this stuff true about the tour at all?" And they said, "Yeah." And if they if they cop to it at that point, 
then the Warriors, again, the choice reverts to the Warriors. Do you want to go through with this trade? Do you want to amend the trade? Or do you want to cancel the trade? I think the Warriors should be given one more day to conduct all trading business. Like, the trade deadline has expired for 29 other teams. The Warriors get one more deal. Well, and they, they should call the Phoenix Suns and try to try to flip for Kevin Durant. Okay. A buddy of mine said, you know, they really don't need GP2. They need KD1. <laughs> An excellent point. <laughs> yeah. But if you say the other 29 teams can't deal, then the Warriors are talking to themselves. No, no, they, they get grandfathered in a partner. Oh, okay. Obviously, See, I'm I think I talked to Milwaukee about Giannis at that point. Good Lord. No, th I mean, this is hilarious and bizarre, but I have a feeling that it's going to end up normal in the end, meaning that the Warriors will grit their teeth. I, th I think they will accept too. the deal and just, you know. I mean, hell, maybe the Blazers make it go away with money. How about this? In order to rescind this deal, all it costs the Golden State Warriors is $130 million for a player they can't fit. Or they can just live with it. Yeah. When that, you put it like that, they're just going to live with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think that the odds of them blowing this thing up are pretty minuscule because it's the worst possible option. Greg in San Jose. Hello, Greg. You're on with Damon and Ratto. Hey, guys. Man, it was just insane to just hear how everything has gone down from here. But, um, I mean, just a couple of things I was kind of thinking about. Like, first of all, I think Portland needs to pay for paid salary, no matter what, at the worst, to hold on to him. Um, but actually, a couple of questions I have is that if they do happen to hold on to Peyton, um, they, I guess what they have to go with probably the like the buyout market or will they even have another option for like a two-way player potentially to fill the void? I'm um, assuming if that they had to put paint on the injured list or anything. So I don't know what you guys think about that. I mean, I think they are going to be kicking the can a little bit harder around the buyout market now. They need bodies. They need a player. They need someone else coming off the bench. I mean... It's the buyout market, or you got to take the tennis balls off of Andre Iguodala's walker and ask him to go out and play. Tennis balls on the walker, Ray. Yeah, I, I heard you. You can chuckle into the microphone. Well, I didn't find it that hilarious. But the other thing is, why would they blow up their plans to use Iguodala as a playoff fixture now? Oh, look I think, at it this I think way. they'd have if to, they'd get, have if to come get 27 up, regular season games in before the playoffs. You ain't going to do squat in the playoffs. Well, maybe not, but this is what the plan has always been. And I don't think they're going to suddenly change that at this point. I, I think their choices are, are they're three and it's, you know, it sucks for them, but they can either accept the trade and be happy with the cap relief while grinding their teeth about not having Peyton immediately. They can negate the trade entirely and get back a very disgruntled, and even more disgruntled than ever, James Wiseman. I don't think they can do that. I don't think they can do it either. Or they have to reopen negotiations with the Blazers to figure out some other way to feel like they've been made whole. And looking at, looking at Portland's roster, the only real option is probably Shaden Sharp, who's not a great defensive player, and he's 19, and they already have more than 19. They don't need another 19-year-old. So, yeah, I mean, just, I don't know what they would do at that point. Like, I was, I was asked, could they rescind the trade partially? Maybe the NBA would grant them that grace if the Pistons were cool with it, and the Hawks were cool with it, and the Trailblazers, well, the Trailblazers don't get a vote anymore. You guys are liars. Um, oh, liars always get a vote. No, they, they should George be, Santos proves that. They should not get they should not get a vote going forward in what the Warriors next course of action in this. Well, they, is. no, they don't get they don't get a vote in that. The Warriors are the ones in charge right now. They're the ones who get to decide whether this trade is killed, modified, or accepted. Again, maybe they could modify it to they end up with just Wiseman to Detroit for Sadiq Bay. Let's eliminate the Hawks. There are five picks, Kevin Knox, and, well, I guess Kevin Knox would have to be thrown in to make the salaries work if we're just a straight-up Yes, Yeah, so the other three teams would be involved if the Warriors wanted to, you know, 
revisit every, every part of this. It's trade. a freaking disaster. Yeah, which is why the easiest course of action for the Warriors ultimately is to feel hard done by but accept the deal anyway. Even the James Wiseman trade was a disaster. That's how much of the James Wiseman draft pick disaster we are still swimming in. Unbelievable. And the Warriors, again, the Warriors did nothing wrong here. The Warriors did nothing other than sit down at a negotiating table with a team that withheld relevant medical information. I did, during crosstalk with Steine and Guru, think this was maybe coming from Detroit. This was maybe coming from James Wiseman. Again, James Wiseman was reported to, he's going to be starting his first game with the Detroit Pistons, to James Wiseman's not playing tonight. And I thought, geez, maybe this is a holdup on the Pistons' medical side. Yeah, and that game's already started. And... I saw the video that Whitley sent out today. You got Steph Curry looking like he's got pressure off of him, even though he can't go tonight. Steph Curry's in a good mood sitting there. You got Steve Kerr on an exercise bike. You got a bouncy uh, 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 Gary Payton II just walking through the background. He looked like he was happy as a clam to be back with the Golden State Warriors wearing Warrior workout gear, head to toe, hoodie up. I mean, he looked like he was ready to go. Nope. Unbelievable. Carlos Correa Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. That's what we're looking at. The same thing that happened to the Giants has happened to the Golden State Warriors. It's unbelievable. It's hilarious.